I welcome you from the Ministry of Daughters of Destiny. My name is Busola Jegede, and it's such a joy to be with you this morning. So we are moving on in our series, The Less Obvious Women in the Bible. Glory, glory be to God. Go with me to the book of Romans. So now I'm going to the New Testament. You know, we've been looking at a lot of women in the Old Testament. We started with Jael, then we spoke about Tama, Tama 1, Tama 2, and then we, we spoke about the wise woman of Tekoa. We spoke about a certain woman of the bears. Fantastic, fantastic uh, expose by the Holy Spirit. And we're moving on now. I just feel, let's go to the New Testament and still see some of this less obvious women. So who are the obvious women of the New Testament? Mary, the mother of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Elizabeth, Mary Magdalene, the woman with the issue of blood. These are very prominent New Testament stories of women or about the woman at the well. Yeah, we have a lot of them. Dorcas, glory be to God. Uh, Lois, Eunice, the mother and grandmother of Timothy. Yes, fantastic, fantastic. These are all obvious women in the New Testament. But there are some other women in the New Testament that are not so obvious, but what they did was significant, especially in the New Testament church. Thank you, Priscilla. Priscilla, the wife of Aquila, they modeled the first couple in ministry for us. You know, the first upright couple in ministry, Priscilla and Aquila, unlike Ananias and Sapphira, who were in ministry, but they were negative, negative model of the couple being in ministry. Let's look at another example. And we're looking at apostle, the female apostle, the only female apostle mentioned in the Bible, the only female apostle. So I saw somebody who made a post on Facebook and said, all female apostles should go and repent. <laughs> I screenshotted it. I screenshotted it. I saved it. All female apostles should go and repent because it's only a man that should be an apostle. They should go and repent because they are committing sin. He didn't read Romans chapter number 16 verse 7. He didn't read it. So sometimes we make a strong point based on emotions and we display our ignorance. Then somebody replied in his comment and said, have you not read about Apostle Junior? And this morning I'm going to talk about the first female apostle mentioned in the Bible. Romans chapter number 16, verse 7. What do we see here? Apostle Paul was greeting all the saints in Rome. And notice that most of the people he greeted, the first set of people he greeted, were women. So even if you start from verse number 3, greet Priscilla and Aquila, my fellow worker in Christ, who wreaks their necks. Greet this, greet that, greet this, greet that. All through Romans chapter number 16. Greet this, greet that. Then we now get to verse number 7. And let's look at this particular greeting of Apostle Paul. He said, Greet Andronicus and Junior. Greet Andronicus and Junior. And for the fact that he attached them together, just like he said, Greet Priscilla and Aquila. So we could see that Priscilla and Aquila were married. They're a couple. But when he was going to greet the other people, he greeted them individually. But when he now said, greet Andronicus and Junior, he now said, my fellow prisoners who are not worthy among the apostles. Hallelujah. He said, they are my countrymen. They are from my tribe. That countrymen does not mean that they are both men. Because if you read another version of the Bible, you're going to see that. He was saying they are from my tribe. That's why he said they are my country people. So these people, number one, let's look at it. Andronicus and Junior, my fellow prisoners who are of note among the apostles, who also were in Christ before me. One very loaded verse. One very loaded verse. So let's see the life of this apostle Junior. Paul, in his letter to the Romans, he spent time to greet and recognize a lot of saints in the New Testament, particularly those who had worked tirelessly with him and those who had done astounding things for the faith. So, 
Andronicus and Junior were Paul's number one, they were his relatives and they were apostles, both of them. So what do we note in this verse? Like I said, they were probably husband and wife, probably a couple. We're not sure, but there's a lot of suggestion to that effect. So let's x-ray Apostle Junior. She was outstanding among the apostles. That's what he said. He said, for the outstanding work, notable, they are of note. N.K. Davis says they are of note among the apostles. Another version says they were outstanding. Glory be to God. So, to be outstanding is to be above average. To be outstanding means they were not ordinary. You can imagine if in this day and age, they are criticizing female apostles. You can imagine what happened then. This woman stood her ground in a male-dominated profession, in a season whereby at that season, they were not even counting women. They were only counting men in those days, in biblical times. But this apostle junior stood and was noteworthy for apostle Paul to note, and he didn't just mention her name. He said she was outstanding. What are the insights from Apostle Junior's life, from the comment made by Apostle Paul? She was a relative of Apostle Paul, number one. She was in prison with him. Say, my co prisoner, they labored together. Apostle Paul was in prison many times. It could be that he was referring to the work of the ministry being like a prison. So we can take it in two ways. It could be that while he was in prison, said they served him in prison. He said, they served with me in prison. If you read another version, they served with me in prison. If you read the NIV. And she was converted to Christianity. He said, they said, they knew Christ before me. They were in Christ before me. These people became born again. They received Christ. They had been serving in the New Testament church before Paul was converted. So, they knew Paul, oh my God. They knew the former Paul. They knew him when he was Saul. They knew the atrocities he was committing because he was their relative. And when he came to Christ, they embraced him. They served him. They walked with him. They didn't judge him. Look at this woman. You know some people, when they know your past, hmm, forget it. They say, I know her. I better go and sit down. What is she doing? I know her very well. We are even from the same village. My, the mother is my cousin's daddy. Blah, blah, blah. They will finish the person. That, that was not what Apostle Junior did. Still served in humility. So, Junior crossed and overcame the hurdle of relationship familiarity. Mm, write it down. Relationship familiarity. There is a place that familiarity can bring you to with a person that you may not recognize Apostle Paul said, let no man know me again after the flesh. I'm a new person. There is a way familiarity will make you to cross certain boundaries which you're supposed to observe. This woman recognized those boundaries. And she still walked with him. She must have still respected him. She was, she's probably older than him in age. I'm just saying. She was in Christ before him. There are some people, no matter what they are, you are preaching, say, when did this one get born again? That she's calling herself apostle. Where, where did she come from? She didn't judge Apostle Paul. For Apostle Paul to mention her, when it comes to ministry, the hardest people to believe in you can be your relatives. Yeah. When it comes to ministry, <laughs> hey, one of the most difficult people to convert are your own relatives. Look at Moses and Miriam. Moses too suffered it. After a while, Miriam and brothers were near on Joseph. We too, we hear God, familiarity, and especially there is relationship. So there's no way you can hide. There's nothing you can tell them. If she knew when, when they put Moses inside the water, that now, is it only you hearing God? Relationship familiarity. She crossed it. The ones that can easily belittle your anointing and trivialize your calling are your relatives. They are the ones that can easily belittle you trivialize your anointing you, you even see it some people that knew the geo before when it was in uni like the way they'll be talking that man is no longer the one you that was in uni lad. <laughs> they have missed it and so this woman was a discerning woman 
Junior had this understanding to serve Apostle Paul in prison. If you read the NIV, it said they served me in prison. She served Apostle Paul in, when he was in prison. She knew no man again after the flesh. She helped the servant of God during his years in prison. She was a co-laborer standing with Paul in prison. Many often desert those in prison, but this Apostle Junior was a rock of comfort to Apostle Paul at a critical moment in his ministry and life. And so she was a relative. She overcome the hurdle of familiarity. She was said to be outstanding, meaning in the early church, she was outstanding in what the saints were doing. What were they doing? They were feeding people. They were preaching the word. Remember, the, so mightily grew the word that it prevailed. Churches were springing up everywhere. People were donating their houses for churches. People were gathering. She was faithful to do her part as an apostle, preaching to people, serving in a ministry capacity, outstanding in her work, faithful and diligent, even at that time. Yet, though she came to Christ before Apostle Paul, she embraced him, respected him, helped him in his journey. She was very humble. She observed protocol, recognizing the unique calling of Apostle Paul and serving him. Some people tend to exercise a funny seniority in Christ. Some people, even though they are Christians, they exercise a funny seniority. I got born again before you. I was ordained before you. I'm a senior pastor before you. All those ones, they don't matter. It is the state of your heart. She was a true servant of God. Apostle Junior was a beautiful soul. Glory be to God. Though she was from the same tribe with Apostle Paul, she was not serving him because of tribalism. She was serving him because she loved God. And it's my prayer that we learn from the life of this fantastic apostle, the only female apostle mentioned in the Bible, and in our calling and in our dealings, let us be humble. God may be raising up a younger person. As long as you know the hand of God is on that person, know that person again, not after the flesh. You may be close to somebody. You may be familiar with somebody. It might even be your relative. But when you are dealing with spiritual things, it's not about your village. It's not about your family. God could have raised a Joseph who was number 11. Yes, to be the deliverer of his family. God can use anybody. And so the lessons we're learning from the life of Apostle Junior is the need for you and I to be sensitive, the need for you and I to observe spiritual protocol, the need for you and I not to be familiar. Familiarity can be dangerous. Don't be over familiar with certain people. Respect them no matter the access you have. This woman had access. She was from Apostle Paul's tribe. She knew him. They were relatives. Yet, she respected those boundaries. These are the things that enable our relationships to last when we do not abuse the benefit of access. In Nigerian parlance, they call it one word. Who can give me that one word? What do they call over familiarity in Nigerian parlance? Be very careful because I've seen this destroying very good relationships. And once you notice it, you have to address it. Okay, what's the one word over familiarity? What do we call it in Nigeria? Avoid see finish. Avoid see finish in any relationship. It is a weapon, it is an attack from the enemy. Value access. The fact that I have access to certain people and God has put me in a position to see certain things in their life, I will never ever abuse it. You have access to your husband, you see him when he's bought naked. Uh -huh. don't see your husband finish don't see him finish and talk to him anyhow see finish they say men love respect don't ever allow see finish to creep into your marriage otherwise you disrespect your husband you know he doesn't have money at that time you, you know his bank account and you know you have to do something major maybe you are the one that will bring the money you, you, you just talk to him anyhow so that doesn't that, that cannot even perform you know he's sick and maybe in that other department, they cannot do anything. You just, you just, I beg, go and sit down. See, finish is dangerous. Apostle Junior never ever did it with Apostle Paul. That's why Apostle Paul could commend her 
so powerfully. See finish is dangerous in any relationship. If you have the benefit of access, value it. What makes people see finish is pride. When pride is coming to your heart, you begin to say, what is it about this? What is it? Don't ever. Kill it immediately. You are feeling like that. Kill see finish. Whoever you are working with, you might be privileged to know certain things. Consider it a privilege. And don't use it as a yardstick that you are now measuring up. God may be blessing you. God may be blessing you and you are even richer than that person. Don't ever allow see finish to come in or disdain honorable relationships. It can be a pastoral relationship. It can be a relationship at work. It can be a relationship with some relatives. No matter where God has taken you, don't allow see finish to spoil your relationships. Finally, I'll just drop this here. What is the antidote? The antidote for malaria is quinine. Until they discovered quinine, people were dying of malaria. But the minute they discovered quinine, which is what is in, you know, all the medicine that have quinine, once you take it, the malaria will go. The antidote for bacteria, people were having bacteria, was penicillin. Once they discovered penicillin, people were no longer dying of bacterial infection. What is the antidote? for C finish. Typically, the person that is seeing you and dishonoring you, the person who is guilty of C finish may not know. The person may not know. The person may just be feeling good, feeling cool, and pride might have risen in that person's heart. So pray for that person. That Lord, open the eyes of this person. This person is crossing the line. You need to pray for that person. Because it was Sifinish that made Judas to betray Jesus. If not for Sifinish, you should have known that this is the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. How can I betray him? You understand? It was Sifinish. It was a Jesus. That, I beg. What is he doing? Which miracle is he doing? Was he not the one carrying the box? Was he not the one who saw when Jesus got money from the fish? Uh, he saw a lot of things. But Sifinish will make you to dishonor what you're supposed to honor. And it's dangerous for that person. Because see finish will make the person to lose their position. So you need to pray for that person. That God should open the person's eyes. So that the person can come to a place of repentance. Now for you. That you are suffering. Or you are the one at the receiving end. You are the one who is being dishonored. By the see finish. It is time for you to change the game. Withdrawal is the antidote for see finish. You need to withdraw. You've opened too many gates. You have overshared. You have over revealed. And that's why the person cannot manage it. So if you come to my house now, and because I give you access to my house, and you are seeing certain things, maybe you see that my kitchen is always dirty, or because I'm busy, or because I don't have a house help. That's safe finish. If you don't know how to manage that information, it will come out of your mouth. <laughs> Look at the woman. When I go to her, if you see the gas cooker she's even using, with the car she's driving, you know, that's because of access. So, I'm just giving an example. I'm not saying my kitchen is dead to you. <laughs> That's not what I'm saying. I'm just explaining it. So, if you notice a relationship is now going through that, you need to close certain doors. You have over-opened, you have overshared. Withdrawal is the antidote for safe finish. So that you can help the person, so that person can value that. This thing I had was a privilege. <laughs> this access I had, it was a privilege. So it's very, very important because if you don't and you continue like that, it can put you in danger. Yeah, because the person will just be running riots. And if you don't put a check to it, pray for the person. But you need to shut certain doors so that you can recalibrate the relationship. Glory be to God. Let's throw this open. What else can you suggest to be uh, the antidote when we realize, look at Junior, respected Apostle Paul. He was, she was born again before Apostle Paul. She still submitted and supported him. What else? See the God in that person. Don't look at that person as that person. Don't judge people in their personal capacity. Judge them with the grace of God on their lives. That because this person... Yeah, let's, let's have more examples as we wrap up this morning. Yeah. What else? can we use to repair our relationships? Because you see, if you don't repair relationship, if such a thing comes in, it can, the relationship can break down. Right or wrong, it can break down. So let's have more examples. 
why was this apostle junior she was able to maintain honor in that relationship where she could have been overly familiar or see apostle paul that their relatives is old. she got born again before him she knew him when he was bad yet she didn't use that if somebody is dishonoring you or saying you finish you need to set boundaries you are entitled to set boundaries it doesn't mean you'll be you'll be bitter it doesn't mean you fight the person you are entitled to your boundaries you are entitled to it it is your sole prerogative to remove boundaries for certain people and if you need to set the boundaries please set the boundaries so that you can save the relationship what else even when somehow self see finish they, <laughs> they can misbehave yes so thank you ma the solution is withdrawal the house help she has seen you people finish now she's talking to daddy she's not talking to you daddy said i should keep that daddy said i should keep this you said where is it going daddy said i should keep which daddy where did you go <laughs> La braca, shata, yeah. where did you enter this house that you are not obeying somebody you are not doing divide and rule don't let them come and destroy your marriage because of see finish because maybe she saw the way your husband shouted at you or the way your husband treated you withdraw her put people in their place so sometimes your know, people working for you they can see you finish I remember I had a staff recently, I was joking. She just started work. She, she just started work. And my husband works at home. And so my husband was working. This girl came to work. They work in the BQ. And she passed my husband. Oh, daddy, good morning, sir. How was your night? Eh? How was your night? What's your business with his night? My husband said he hates that greeting. What was your business with my night? You that came yesterday. Why do you want to know my husband? I called her. I warned her seriously. I said, you know, you just started work here. Look at me very well. Once you come to this place, if you see this man, all you owe him is good morning, sir, and pass. I don't want to hear, see, finish, because you are working in my house. See, finish. Don't allow it. Yes. Let's have more example. Set ground rules. Thank you. Set ground rules. Don't allow it. Don't let it pass. It will get worse. If you allow C finish to go on, it's going to get worse. And it can injure you because the person will lose guard. The person will continue to behave anyhow. And it can open certain doors. So when you set the boundary, everybody will shape up. Yeah. Everybody will shape up. Everybody will shape up. It's very important. You setting boundaries is a, is a form of supervision. You see, when you give people work to do, you have to supervise them and make sure they are doing it well. So you redirect people to everybody. No, this is how far you go. It's your responsibility to set boundaries in your home. See, finish. How can people just enter your bedroom like that? Even if he is your husband's relative living with you. There are certain places that shouldn't be see, finish. Draw boundaries. Assess the reason for the see, finish and make amends in those areas. There are some of us, we laugh too much with people. There are some people, you can't joke too much with them. Immediately you start joking with them. If you give them an inch, they will go a mile. Some people are very forward. And watch this. I've noticed that some people have weaknesses. So you're going to note the weaknesses of certain people. If I know that this is your weakness, and I give you room in that area, the person will see you finish. Some people have weaknesses. And so you have to study, this person has this weakness. So I will not allow you to continue because I know you are weak in this area. You have not yet matured in this area. So see finish must be addressed. You know, sometimes you may be with some people, some important people. Even me, like I, I, I was sharing, even when my husband has certain visitors, I don't talk to them like that. I may be present, but they are probably his colleagues. If that's not the time I put my mouth in the talk. No, that's not right. There are places you go to because of how you got there you have to know how you speak don't just become overly familiar this person that you went with may still be judging or gauging the relationship the person is still cautious and the person because of safe finish we just be talking anyhow that's not right that's not right because as that person is talking the people we are relating with they are looking at you that how come this person is talking like this that means you are not in control so these things are very important in relationships and there are issues you have to address in extreme cases you may have to let them go and yeah if if you cannot redeem it if you're trying to correct see finish and the person is not accepting correction 
that's pride. And some people, because they are proud, they can't accept correction. Oh, why is she now saying I shouldn't enter the room again? But I used to enter. Why is she now saying, you have to know that that person is trying to pass a message to you. It's not that the person hates you. So if you have humility in your heart, you should be able to know, ah, I shouldn't cross these boundaries. So if I know that you will not be able to handle certain places if I take you there, I won't take you there again. If I've seen that you failed in one area, I took you somewhere and you didn't handle it well, I will not experiment with another event. I will make sure I don't take you so that I teach you the lesson in a subtle way. Because sometimes I've realized if you're trying to correct certain people, they take it personal, especially me that I'm in ministry. Sometimes I'm trying to correct people and that's when they, they will say they are leaving the ministry, they are going. And I'm just trying to correct them. So now sometimes I found a subtle way of correcting people that is not direct. I will show through an allegory of my actions that I'm trying to correct you. I'm trying to shape you in this area because see finish has already entered. So it's very, very important that you receive correction and take it in good faith so you can grow. So you can grow. My husband has told me before, when we went somewhere, when we were in the car, he said, ah, you were talking too much. You know, he's my husband. He can tell me that. You were talking too much. You were, you were getting carried away because they started talking about ministry. And, and because they were talking about ministry, I just, I was just talking and he was cringing in his seat. So let's be careful. If you're on the, on the receiving side, address it. If you're the one doing it unknowingly and somebody's trying to correct you, receive the correction. And like we said, different ways of withdrawal, setting boundaries. Don't laugh too much with the person. Deny access to certain things because it is not a right for certain people to know certain things about you. You decided to open it yourself and you can decide to shut it. Glory be to God. When you are too nice to people, you lose face. They really don't appreciate it. Set your boundaries. Mm -hmm. You can be nice, but let us know when things are going wrong and address it so you can save the relationship. Hallelujah! Have we learned something today? Glory, glory be to God. And so I want to thank the Lord for the lessons we have learned from the life of Apostle Junior today, the first female apostle mentioned in the Bible. Amen. Thank you so much, people. Bye for now.